So thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we have Daniel Johnson here from Olin College of Engineering. Dan will be presenting on his college. Uh, I'm going to turn over now to you, sir. Daniel? Oh, um, sorry. Um, hi, um, <clears throat> my name is Dan Johnston and I am uh, the o uh, Olin's uh, Regional Admission Counselor. Uh, so Olin College of Engineering uh, is a, a small um, project-based, very hands-on uh, engineering school in Needham, Massachusetts. So I am regional uh, and I am actually based in Boca Raton, Florida. And I just work with students from really Texas to North Carolina. So um, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all today. Uh, and today really th this uh, presentation is similar to, to what we offer uh, on campus, but it's not fully uh, kind of as in depth uh, as that. So this is kind of give you a bird's eye view of who Olin is. And then I'm, I'm happy to answer any further questions and, and dig a little bit deeper um, on certain things uh, within our presentation. So um, I guess first uh, we can discuss kind of who who uh, is Olin and, and what what makes up Olin. So, um, like I met, like I mentioned, Olin is um, we're a smaller school. We're about 350 students total. Um, we are all undergraduate, and it is that way on purpose. Um, so our uh, school was really designed to be. We were founded to be different. Olin. Uh, wanted to, uh, the Olin Foundation really wanted to, to, to change the way that engineering was being brought to students. Uh, and one of uh, really the, the biggest ways that we do that is with uh, our curriculum. The curriculum is very project-based, it's very hands-on, and it's very collaborative. So project-based, what does that mean? Uh, that means that you are going to be working on projects really from the, the start. When you, when you get on campus, you are going to be working on projects. Uh, with, the, with the way our curriculum is taught, you're not going to sit in a lecture hall and then maybe have a lab. You will be um, really working with your professor uh, and, and working on a project that reinforces what you had just gone over. So uh, it's one of the ways that we do things. And it, again, it starts that way from the moment that you get on campus. Uh, similar to that it is hands-on. So um, the, the students are required and encouraged to, to get their hands dirty. So if you're the type of student that likes to, um, likes to get their hands dirty, likes to really figure things out by using your hands and, you know, you know listening to a lecture uh, about it, but really diving in and, and um, figuring things out by tinkering uh, and really figuring things out by doing. That's one of the, one of the, the key things at Olin. And then the, the last one is collaboration. So Olin is, um, collaboration uh, really is key at Olin. It's something that is so uh, important of, of who we are. Um, the college really comes together and, and works together as an institution. It's really one of the advantages of being a smaller school um, is everybody seems uh, to know each other by first name. And if, if somebody needs help, there's somebody on campus that's going to be there to help. And the collaboration you can see, um, I mean, really uh, in the picture there, there's a lot of group work that happens. And there's group work that happens, again, from, from the, the start when you get on campus, where being able to interact with people, um, be, being able to interact with them and work with them and work through problems and find solutions is something that is so important to the curriculum at Olin, but, but the overall experience. And, th and this really extends, and me speaking from more of the administration, administration side, working in the Office of Admission and Financial Aid, this is something that, that I've seen uh, on my end, that, that the, not just the, the students and the faculty are collaborative, but on a, a larger scale um, within the institution. So it's a, a pretty cool opportunity there. You can see Olin's, uh, Olin's mission. Olin College prepares students to become exemplary engineers, innovative uh, engineering innovators who recognize needs, design solutions, and engage in creative enterprises for the good of the world. Uh, and the, the one of the things, uh, the one thing I'll point out of here is for the good of the world. That last couple words there. Um, Olin really is focused on making positive changes in the world through engineering, and it, it focuses focuses us and centers us uh, really into, into all of our decisions. So is it whatever decision will be made on campus, uh, is, is it keeping with that mission of engineering for the good of the world? 
So here is a short video about uh, the shop. Like I said, it, it's a very hands-on um, institution and I wanted to share with you guys one of the best ways that students are getting to use their hands um, and that's through the shop at Owen. I'm Daniel. I think since you clicked mute, we can't share the video anymore. Oh, I'm sorry about that. No worries. Shop ninjas are an important part of the shop. Ninja stands for unique information world. Just ask. The ninjas are awesome. Um, we have 18 uh, student workers. We call them ninjas. The ninjas help other students, staff, and faculty learn new machines. They're ambassadors to the community for the shop. The ninjas are a pretty awesome group because the ninjas are so passionate about making this space really useful and really accessible to as many students as possible. I've always loved making things and working in shop spaces and being a ninja really gave me the opportunity to get involved with the shop and be part of the shop community. We're not a traditional shop but very much focused on being a teaching environment. We want to have the lowest barriers possible for our students, staff, and faculty to actually get in the shop and learn cool things. It's really encouraging to be able to see my fellow classmates. We never set foot in the shop before, feel comfortable coming in and making things and not feeling afraid to use this big scary equipment and seeing that it is really quite amazing to produce things and do things by hand as opposed to just handing it off to someone and having it show up in two weeks. And it's, it's just a lot more gratifying to be able to do it yourself. Our ninjas are fairly representative of the community. Interestingly enough, all of our welding ninjas are actually women. The amount of people and the diversity of people from Owen in this space has improved and increased quite a lot the past few years, as more and more people are getting trained, especially non-mechanical engineers and non-project team members. The shop isn't a scary place. It's a place where you can build things and you're allowed to make mistakes and you're allowed to mess up. If something breaks in the machine shop, it's not about how expensive is this tool. It's about what mistakes do we make and how do we learn from them? How do we keep the shop a place where we can make mistakes? Because that's the only way that we're actually gonna get better at things. I hope it makes the students feel that they can do anything in this space, um, that there's real opportunity for them to learn and grow. I feel um, much more confident now, you know, graduating, going out into the industry and um, knowing that this is something that I haven't had experience with. I have enough knowledge base now with hands-on experience that I'll be able to, um, you know, figure it out and I feel ready and excited. Um, so yeah, the, the shop, I, th I wanted to show that video just because I think it's a great representation of, uh, like I mentioned, the, the hands-on um, aspect of Olin, but really shows the, really the, the options that are available for students that, that want to, like, like I mentioned, that want to get their hands dirty, that want to learn by doing. So a uh, great opportunity for, uh, for students there. So at Olin, <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit about our majors uh, now. Uh, we, like I mentioned, we're, we're a little bit smaller, so, you know, we don't have, you know, 75 different majors. Uh, so I'll go over these right now. So we have uh, mechanical engineering, electrical and computer engineering is uh, one major. And then our last major uh, is a general engineering degree. And there's concentrations in different areas. So uh, the ones that are established, bioengineering, design, computing, which is computer science, um, robotics, uh, and there's also a self-design option for students. And again, this is where 
uh, the Olin might be a, a little bit different from other schools that you, you may have heard of because the opportunity to design your own major at an engineering school might seem unique. Um, but if there's something that is just perhaps maybe outside the realm of you know, mechanical, electrical, or, or computer, um, something that is very similar to those, but maybe a little bit uh, just on the fringe, uh, our faculty uh, come from really all over the world, uh, all over the United States and have such a diverse background uh, in areas of specialty uh, where they really can uh, help students design their own major and they have experience in that field. So that's something that, uh, again, if you see something here or if you don't see something here, uh, but you still like that project based that hands on curriculum that doesn't mean that you can't do it, whether it was uh, ocean engineering, um, chemical engineering, something like that. I mean, maybe if you wanted to do something within like nuclear, that might, uh, might be somewhat of a, a challenge, but you know, certainly uh, we want to make it as as possible for you uh, to be able to study what you would like at Olin. And, and the students are given a lot of um, a lot of opportunities to design their own major and, and really come up with what best suits them for their career. Because again, this is all about not just what you want to study in college, but how students are going to be successful moving on um, in their career. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on. So life at Olin, what is, what is it life, uh, excuse me, what is it like to be uh, an Olin student? And the best way, uh, certainly the best way for you to, to find out is actually uh, through our, through visiting campus. That is the absolute number one way uh, for you to be able to, to see what life is like. And, uh, you know, hopefully soon, certainly we're, we're dealing with this uh, pandemic situation. So we do not have current uh, in-person uh, in-person tours, but there will be uh, online programming, which I would encourage you to check that out on our website uh, throughout the summertime where you'll be able to, to talk with tour guides and, and take a virtual tour and things like that. But as far as life at Olin, uh, kind of uh, on the whole, one of the things I wanted to point out was the what's called the BOW collaboration. BOW collaboration stands for Babson, Olin, and Wellesley. So uh, Olin College of Engineering, we're in Needham, Massachusetts. Uh, we are literally right next door to Babson. Uh, Babson College, which you may have heard of. Babson is one of the premier business institutions uh, in the country. We are literally right next door to that. Um, and Wellesley is one of the top um, women's uh, liberal arts colleges in the country, and that's just down the street. So the, since those three institutions are very, um, very dissimilar, uh, one of the things that's a very cool opportunity is we came together and formed a collaboration where students can actually cross register at the different institutions. So for instance, Olin does not have any language courses, but certainly we have a lot of students that are interested in pursuing language in, in college, whether it's Spanish or Chinese, whatever it may be. Um, those students can take those classes over at Wellesley uh, or entrepreneurship is a major part. And it's actually my third point on uh, here on this slide here. Uh, entre entrepreneurship and business is a major thing that students uh, want to go into after college. Well, having one of the premier business institutions and entrepreneurship institutions in the country, literally within walking distance right outside your door is an opportunity that is unlike a at any other institution. So students can cross register, they can take one class a semester uh, at each institution. Uh, and also, I mean, for, for Babson and Wellesley, if there are, are business students at Babson who understand the, the technological impact of kind of the world that we're living in right now, them being able to take classes at Olin is a pretty cool opportunity as well. So very, very cool, many, um, very cool option for students that, again, when, when, when I talk about Olin to, to students and, and um, guidance counselors and, and parents, I never say that we are just engineering. I like to say that we are all engineering, but we're not just engineering. There are so many other options for students, um, so many other options for students. And that leads me to my next point, the arts, humanities, and social sciences. Those, again, we are an engineering school, Olin College of Engineering, but the arts, humanities, and social, science, social sciences play a major part of, of who we are and, and the type of student that we are trying to develop because we, we know as an institution and unfortunately the founding members, faculty and the um, board of trustees realize that, that the world is not just engineering. Yes, I mean, certainly right now, 
and moving forward, engineering is how you make you know large changes, uh, large changes in the world and, and in society. But how you accomplish those changes, how you share those changes with people, how you get those ideas across, is with the help of arts and humanities and social sciences. So those three areas, you don't just take every uh, engineering course or science courses. You still have to take arts and humanities and social sciences. They are a large part of your curriculum. You don't really get away from that, and we strongly encourage our students. Uh, to pursue that. Uh, we have a very, you know, engineering, I think a lot of times people think that it's a very techie type of thing, whether you're building computers or you saw in the shop where people are, are manufacturing things in the machine shop, but our students are very creative. We have a very large population, excuse me, a very large population of artists on campus, of musicians, of uh, actors and actresses. I mean, uh, there, there's a, a large theater club on campus. There's uh, the uh, Olin College uh, Conductorless Orchestra. Uh, there's a jazz band on campus. I mean, there, there are, if you want to continue to pursue art, you are absolutely able to do that at an engineering school. I would strongly encourage, and you would not be one of the outsiders if you still cared about art. I mean, there, there's a student art gallery on campus as well. So um, those are a major part of what we do. Uh, moving on to my next point uh, is entrepreneurship. So Olin uh, kind of was founded on the idea of, you know, applying what you're learning in college and, and having it um, having it being applicable to, to, to the real world. And so uh, a lot of times how we do that is through entrepreneurship. So this, the idea of a startup company, the idea of, um, Olin was kind of known as a startup college uh, for a while, because I should have mentioned that our, our first graduating class was in 2006. So not uh, just 14 years ago. So not that long ago when we, when we first started. So the idea of a startup college, of, of a startup industry, that idea is, is at the heart of who Olin is. So if students that wanna go on to start their own business, there are classes that are designed to help these students not just, you know, again, not just learn how to make something, to, to have an idea, but how to foster that idea, how to get business support, how to get financial support for these things. And so this is something, again, that starts um, really from the time that you get on campus. These are not courses that have to be, you know, you have to take kind of your general education and your science and, fit, you know, uh, physics and calculus and stuff like that, that you need to take, you know, for your first two years, and then you can take these kind of upper division courses. What makes Olin unique is that these, the, you know, these core principles that Olin has, they really start at the at the freshman level, at the first year level. So really cool opportunity. I, I certainly would encourage you to, to check out more of our entrepreneurship on our website. Uh, and the last is passionate pursuits. So you've heard me talk a, a little bit about uh, the collaboration and, and arts humanities and entrepreneurship. And uh, those are things that are, you know, a part of the, the Olin curriculum. But one of the things that Olin, I think, excels at is the the encouragement and the opportunity for students to pursue something that is passionate for them. They're called passionate pursuits. Um, for them to, to continue on doing something that they really care about. And this can be related to engineering. So it could be within the machine shop, it could be 3D printing, it could be drones, uh, but it also could be something as, you know, if you care en enough about it as origami, um, you know, or, or music, something like that, where uh, sometimes Olin will provide the funding for you to continue to do these things, to, to continue to learn more uh, about an area that has nothing to do with engineering that is just important to you, whether it has to do with social justice or anything like that, um, or inv involvement in your community. Olin really understands that it's not, again, we are Olin College of Engineering, but it's not just engineering. We're trying to develop human beings and people that are going to go out and have a positive impact in the world. And we understand that it's, you can't do that with just an engineering education. There's got to be more to it. So this, uh, uh, again, a, a pretty cool opportunity for students to, um, again, collaborate with, with people from other institutions, get a bigger understanding of, of what's out there uh, and how engineering interacts with the, with humanities, with the social sciences, and also students have the opportunity to uh, go after and pursue things that are important to them. So research at Olin, I get this question a lot, is, uh, is there research available? Uh, even, you know, your, all of your students are undergrads, is there a lot of uh, research that is available for undergraduate students? Traditionally at, you know, larger institutions, there's less 
less and less uh, research that's available for undergraduates because that research, the research opportunities tend to go to master's and PhD students. Well, at Olin, uh, because we are all undergraduates, uh, the students have a lot of research opportunities because there's no one else kind of in line to, to take those. So I, I listed, these are just some of the, the research opportunities that I think that have been done really in the past two years. Asteroid hunting, assistive tech for the blind, energy efficient uh, desalination, so taking salt water, making it fresh, uh, brain machine interfaces, textiles, technology and manufacturing in the US, uh, thermal condu conductivity of quilts, very interesting there, um, and and there, there's a whole lot more. So if you go uh, to the Olin website, olin.edu, and just search research, uh, you can find out uh, a little bit more and go deeper into into these pro uh, projects. But again, you can see that there's there's more than just kind of that traditional 3D printing machine shop type thing. Assistive tech for the blind. You know how uh, what what needs to be done. What can how can engineers best help in assistive tech. I think that's, uh, again, something that we go back to that idea of engineering for good of the world. A lot of uh, these things here have to do with that. So uh, again, a pretty cool opportunity for, for research at Olin. And again, this can happen as soon as you get on campus. So that's, um, uh, I think, something that, that's really cool about Olin. So uh, senior capstones. Uh, this is uh, another thing that I think makes Olin um, a little bit more special. Uh, the first one, so senior capstones, at Olin are uh, senior capstone programs and projects that uh, as a senior uh, at Olin, they're, they're kind of your last big projects that you do. And they really are what help students, uh, one of the, the best ways that help students get jobs uh, moving, moving forward after they graduate, because this last year is an opportunity for them to gain real world experience uh, and work on project teams and things like that. So the first one is scope which stands, uh, stands for Senior Capstone uh, Program in Engineering. And SCOPE is something that is really, um, uh, really uh, a, a unique opportunity. I won't talk about that because my next slide is about that. Uh, the next one is Affordable Design and Entrepreneurship. And uh, ADE really takes that idea of engineering for good of the world uh, and, and allows the students to do um, so I say allows the students to pursue that in a, a much deeper way. So this is where students, the affordable design and entrepreneurship, where students are trying to find a problem that has to do uh, a, a problem in the world and addressing it specifically, whether that problem is um, desalination uh, is a good one, finding, uh, so developing a, a, a lower cost, Solar, uh, solar panels for you know, third world countries and things like that, even uh, some projects here in the United States. Um, so this is where if you are really passionate about uh, helping people, um, less advantaged people, affordable design uh, and entrepreneurship might be something that you would wanna do for your capstone. Uh, and then uh, one of the newer ones is Olin's uh, Senior Entrepreneurship Engineering Capstone. So again, entrepreneurship is a major part of who we are at Olin. And this, this is a new one that was introduced last year. Uh, so I'm really uh, excited to see what becomes of that. But now I'll stop talking for a minute so you can watch this video on scope. taken by seniors and it's a year-long project where students work on teams with and for an external sponsor on a project that creates value for that sponsor. We consider SCOPE to be a true capstone because students have spent three years honing their technical skills, developing design skills, and communication skills, and professional skills. Uh, they've worked on teams on a, a lot of open-ended projects together. Uh, and they've been through the design process from start to finish dozens of times. So by the time they get to the capstone, uh, they're ready to really synthesize all of that and more again. Before the year starts, we signed 13 to 14 different external sponsors from different industries. Uh, so we work with them to define the projects that we think would be a good fit for our students. And these projects represent a range of disciplinary domains as well as different points in the project development. In the first week of SCOPE, students learn what teams they're on, they learn a little bit about the 
projects and they serve the research they're sponsored and their liaisons, but kickoff is really the day when everybody comes to campus, they get to meet their liaisons and sponsors for the first time, and develop a shared vision for what success looks like at the end of the year. This is our senior capstone project where we're working with Tata Motors and Autodesk, as well as five students from Coventry University in the UK to design a concept for an autonomous vehicle for aging adults. Autonomous vehicles are in the future. Everybody has sort of a horse in their place, but nobody's really looking at how they can help the people who stand to benefit from it the most. The preliminary phases has really just been getting our feet wet, getting a sense of who our user group is and what their needs actually are. One of the things that makes Scope really exciting is the wide diversity of projects that students get to work on. Projects from different disciplinary domains, but also projects that are in very different stages of the project development cycle. I'm on the Raytheon Scope team, and what we are trying to do for this project is to overall make circuits less resource intensive. We've been working on a very, very technical project, working on plans of magnetics and also modeling of circuit elements. We were told that at the beginning that this project was going to be drinking from a fire hose as far as like learning and, and work at the beginning goes, like gaining knowledge, which it definitely was. And it seemed like completely unsurmountable at first. And I think we have a really good grasp of it now. I see this project as a great opportunity. It really helps bring education down to a real world level and what we can expect after we graduate. Student teams are working to do design reviews and technical reviews. They produce written deliverables and really they're working closely with their liaison and having weekly calls to really co-create with them. We've only got a month left and we still have the book and the prototype to create. Um, what we want those things to be. We are in the final month and a half in our scope project. We want to design our final test vehicle, which is an impedance transformer that none of us have encountered before. Hi, I'm exciting day at the end of the year where we get to mark and celebrate the team's accomplishments throughout the year. They have uh, turned in their final reports, they have delivered prototypes to their sponsors, they've given technical presentations to their sponsors, and they're about ready to graduate. But before they do, we have this big public presentation where they get to show off what they did over the course of the year. So today I like really assessed how much work has been done, where we've gone, and I think I'm really proud of how the project came out. And so on the technical side, all it teaches you how to learn. They teach you how to, how to teach yourself. We had to start from scratch with our knowledge of all of the technology that we were working with. Um, and I think that really came together. At the end of scope, we are really looking to see that our students have developed personally and professionally, but also that they've executed a really good project and created value for their sponsors. What our company gets from this interaction with Owen is uh, the research and new young bright minds that we could potentially have as great town employees in the future. Every year, we continue to be um, surprised and impressed by the caliber of the students' skills and the experience that they can bring to the table. We were all so invested in the project. We have generated a model that we're really excited about. I gained more from that than I had initially thought I ever would. <clears throat> and these are uh, some, some scope sponsors. So there you, you can see Amazon, Boeing, Boston Scientific, Ford, GE. There's a, these are our names that you are very familiar with. They're not kind of smaller, smaller companies that are, you know, um, that Olin is asking to work with. These companies a lot of times have to get on a waiting list to work with students in the scope program. So very successful, uh, a really cool opportunity. Now, uh, I'll talk a little bit about graduation uh, or graduates, and uh, I think I'll, I'll wrap up here and see that we have some questions and I'll get to those as well. So uh, this past year, 2019 grads, 100% uh, of them did at least one technical internship. You can see there 73% did two or more. So internships, technical internships, meaning uh, they have to do specifically with the areas that they're interested in, in engineering, 100% of them did that, which is why you can, um, 
why our students are so successful after graduation. 88% of the students of, excuse me, of first year students did a, did a technical internship or research. So again, the, the involvement that students get at the freshman level, at the first year level, um, is, is very in depth. You don't have to wait, excuse me, you don't have to wait to get into uh, getting your hands dirty and getting involved in research. You really can start to do that right away. And then the last uh, point here, 94 companies recruited on campus. Uh, those 94 companies, um, and that was in 2016, 2017, uh, there was, it was very similar the, the past couple years. There are, are times where there are more recruiters on campus than we have graduates, which is a great, um, I won't even call it a problem. It's a great situation to be in where there are more companies on, uh, at, at Olin trying to recruit Olin students than we have graduates. So as a prospective student, as a prospective graduate looking to go in the field, that's, uh, you are presenting, uh, presenting yourself in a great way. Then some more outcomes. You can see the starting salary. Uh, average starting salary is about 88000 uh, and then you can see what the, the difference, depending on whether the mechanical or computer, whatever it may be. And then our top employers, again, these are, are places that you have heard of. You, you know these companies. Um, and uh, so Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple. Uh, these, again, these are our places where, where you, you know who they are and um, our students are getting hired there, which is uh, really a great opportunity. So uh, kind of wrapping up here, uh, aid and the, the Olin tuition scholarship. So Olin is very fortunate where every student, uh, no matter their merit, uh, no matter the, the residency classification, uh, every student gets the same merit-based award, which is worth half the value of tuition. So um, tuition, uh, total tuition, room and board is about $73,000. Tuition is about 52, right around 52. So the Olin Tuition Scholarship that every student gets, regardless of merit, um, is about half the value of tuition, which works out to be a little over $100,000 for the first year. Excuse me, uh, the $100,000 for your four, um, your four years at Olin. And then with need base, uh, Olin does meet 100% of demonstrated need for U.S. citizens and permanent residents. So the Olin Tuition Scholarship is available for everyone, for whether you are um, you know, U.S. citizen, a permanent resident, or an international student. Every student gets that same merit-based award. And then we do meet 100% of demonstrated need based off of the FAFSA for U.S. citizens and permanent residents. So again, a pretty cool opportunity um, for students that may need a little bit more aid. We, do, we wanna make sure that, that finances um, is not preventing students from attending Olin. And then that is the end of my presentation. So I see that there are uh, some questions here, and I, I think they may have uh, they may have been going on during the presentation. So I may circle back to them. So one of them are options for concentrations for students who are interested in designing video games and multimedia. Um, and for video game design uh, and multimedia, certainly there is, like I mentioned, there is an art. Um, component. There's not something specifically set up for those majors uh, or, or kind of um, for those concentrations, but it doesn't mean that students can't do those. But if, if a student was looking specifically for video game design or something like that, then Olin, we don't have a, you know, kind of a specific set program for that. But I'm sure that students can do that, whether it's the graphic design piece that they need or the, the artistic piece of game design um, or more, certainly more of the coding and stuff like that, the computing side, that's certainly um, available. And I'm, I'm, I'm certain that there's students that have um, uh, done things like that. Uh, our next question, given how engineering focused the majors are, uh, what space did the humanities and social science play? Oh, that was going on uh, during that. So um, you, you heard me say that the, the humanities and social sciences are a major, major part of, of who we are at Olin. Uh, another question, the gender and race demographics. Um, the, the race demographics I, for last year's class, uh, I'm, uh, off the top of my head, I can't quite uh, remember gender. Uh, Olin is actually one of the, the very few institutions that is gen, really gender split, right around 50% male, 50% female identified. Um, and the, um, again, the, the race demographics, I would, I, for the past year's class, I'm not sure I'd have, I'd have to, to double check. I apologize for that. 
Uh, a very uh, uh, great question. What are the six-year graduation rates uh, at Olin? The six-year graduation rate is, I believe, 92%. Um, it is quite high. And um, uh, again, our, our, our students are, uh, when, when students get to Olin, when they go through the, the process of the, the application process, which I actually should, um, I'll, I'll um, after this, I'll, I'll go a little bit over our uh, application process because I didn't, I didn't put anything in there. Uh, the graduation, uh, graduation rate is around 62% for, for six years. So students are, when they get to Olin, they know that they're, they're going to, um, they're, they, they are, are very, very motivated to graduate. Um, which is why that is so, um, which that is so high. Um, how supportive is Olin's uh, financial aid to DACA students? Um, again, we, there, unfortunately, there isn't any kind of institutional aid um, or, or um, financial need for undocumented students. But again, every student does get that, that um, the Olin tuition scholarship, which is half the value of tuition. And, um, what percentage of your students are out of state? Uh, most of them, actually. The one of the the largest uh, state for out of state students is uh, California, but we have students that come from uh, obviously California, Texas, um, Utah, Nebraska, Oklahoma. I mean, really, uh, our students our students come from all over the country, all over the world. Uh, uh, out of the out of the United States, I'd say China and India are two of our South Korea. Uh, some some of the larger countries, uh, some of the countries where uh, most of the students come from, but it is a very uh, very diverse institution, is definitely as far as where students are coming from. Uh, the retention rate for first to second year was, uh, I believe, it was around eighty eight percent. I want to say eighty eight uh, or ninety six. Um, it, again, it is it is quite high uh, for that. Again, and and so I'll I'll, I'll pause here uh, to talk a little bit about our admission process. So our uh, admissions requirements, which you you can see what the the freshman profile was for uh, this past year's class. For a GPA, uh, our mid ranges here GPA was about a three point seven five to a four point zero unweighted. Uh, the SAT was a fourteen sixty to fifteen twenty. Uh, and the ACT was a 34 to 35. Uh, so uh, those are our, again, those are our mid ranges. We do admit students lower than that as well as higher than that. Just depends on the overall profile. Olin is an institution that cares greatly about who the student is as a person, not just who they are uh, statistically. So the, our application process is extremely thorough. So we first start with the, you know, the, uh, Common app or the coalition app, and we are looking at students. <clears throat> we are looking at students' uh, essays and letters of recommendation in great detail. And kind of the way the way I like to um, frame it is that if we see that students are, um, or if we basically look at their application, look at their GPA and test scores, and then we we read their application uh, essays and letters of recommendation. If we if we like what we see on paper, um, we want to meet that student. So we invite the students to what's called Candidates Weekend. So again, this is a little bit more unique because our admission process is two, two stages, two steps, basically. The first is you're submitting your application and letters of recommendation and essays. If we like what we see there, we'll invite you to Candidates Weekend. And Candidates Weekend is where uh, students have the opportunity to really show us who they are. So they, um, they, and actually Candidates Weekend serves two purposes. It serves the, the purpose for the student to get to know who Olin is. So they get to see the clubs and organizations that are available. They're sitting in on uh, some mock classes. They're getting to tour the shop. They're you know, doing campus tours, getting to see what it's like in, in uh, the residence halls to really gain an understanding of who Olin is. This is, it's a two day thing. It's a Friday and Saturday. Um, so students, by the time they leave Olin, they, they have a very strong idea of who we are at Olin and if they can picture themselves there. Um, then on our side, we are really getting to know the student as well. So there is an interview done by uh, most times a faculty member, a staff member, and a student and an, or an alumni. So it's a, a, a three-member committee where uh, they are, there's a, an in-person interview. And then there also is a group exercise. So you heard me talk about collaboration earlier and how important that is. We are really evaluating that from the start. So we want to see how you interact. 
We want to see how you interact with, um, you know, with colleagues and other students and really be able to see, um, you know, how collaborative are you? You know, are there opportunities for you? Uh, within collaboration, you know, or are you, you know, team being a team player is really who you are and what you're about. So um, that's something that that is very important. So it, by the time you leave, uh, you have an opportunity to know who we are, but also we gain a, a pretty strong understanding of who you are uh, as well. So that's a little bit about our admission process. And I certainly would encourage you to um, check out our website if you have um, more questions for that. Uh, we are testing requirement be adjusted next year due to COVID-19. Uh, at this point, that is still in consideration. And again, check check back in the website, and we'll be um, we will uh, you'll know for sure as well. Uh, is housing guaranteed for students all four years? Uh, yes, because we actually require our students to live on campus all four years. So we are a four year residential campus. You are allowed to have a car uh, on campus as well, starting as a freshman. So that's that's open for you. But yeah, Olin is a four year residential school. Um, uh, how do students usually describe the campus culture? That's a great question. Um, I think uh, from, again, I, I, am a, a, I am regionally based, so I, am, I only have the opportunity to visit campus a couple times a year, which I certainly uh, enjoy those, uh, those opportunities. So I would encourage you to, to check out what's available on the website uh, and our, our, um, our Olin students do a great job on, on Instagram. So check out our Instagram on, um, or the, the Olin Instagram and Twitter, uh, where you can, the, the past couple weeks, and I should say YouTube as well, the past couple weeks we've had students, uh, current students talking about what life is like at Olin for them. So I would encourage you to go back and, and check that. And if you go to our website, there's kind of um, a condensed version of everything. But if you go to, if you search Olin uh, on Instagram, you can find everything that's available there. So I, I would definitely would encourage you, if you wanna know what it's like what life is like as a student for for students, I think it's it's better. Um, our students can answer that question much uh, much more uh, effectively and efficiently than I could. Uh, do you have a transfer student population? Uh, really, we, we don't really take transfers. Um, and this also, I, sh I should mention that we also don't take any AP or dual enrollment or IB credit or anything like that um, for the purposes of graduation at Olin. Sometimes if, if, if maybe um, there was one course that would satisfy something, you can, you can petition to have that course, um, whether it was a, a dual credit or dual enrollment course that you did in high school. Uh, sometimes those can be taken, but really because of our curriculum, because it is very project-based, hands-on, there isn't necessarily, you know, uh, uh, college entry-level psychology, there's no real equivalent course to that at Olin. Certainly those concepts uh, are taught at Olin, but not in the same capacity. So there isn't kind of a, a transferability of courses. So um, that is something to, um, to keep in mind, which is also why we don't really have a, a transfer population. Uh, how has Olin changed in the last 19 years, if you've noticed any? Um, that's a great question. Um, how has Olin changed? I think it's certainly, uh, one of Olin's missions is to 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 reach different populations within um, engineering, which is why again we have uh, the merit based uh, scholarship or merit based financial aid. Excuse me, uh, not merit based. The need based financial aid, where we'll meet 100% of demonstrated need, because we understand that there are there are highly motivated and talented students that want to change the world, but in sometimes in populations that may not be able to afford a, a, a private uh, a private institution. So I think one of the, the best changes that Olin, uh, I, I, that not necessarily that Olin has made, but has, has kind of grown uh, with them is the, the, the diversity on campus um, uh, is, is, again, as far as it's not just students from the Northeast, students from all over the country, um, from so many different cultures, so many different backgrounds. That is something that um, I think is, is, continue, is trending, I shouldn't say trending in the, in, in the right direction. It's, it's really um, uh, it's being a step more established every single year. So it, that's a, a pretty cool opportunity. Uh, do you consider students who take a gap year after high school? Um, and if so, what is the best use of the student's gap year? Absolutely. Um, 
as, as you kind of saw with the scope video and, and what I've been, been talking about, the, it's not just the education that we want students to, to get out of Olin, it's the, it's the experience. So if a student has an opportunity to take a gap year and that gap year could include them doing a lot of travel throughout the world uh, or you know, getting, getting into an internship or a job before they start college, that, that's great. That, that is absolutely part of the overall experience that we want students to have because as an employer, one of the things that makes Olin students so attractive to future employers is the experience that they have with the education. Yes, they have a very technical background and you heard um, that students say in the, the scope video that Olin helps, Olin teaches them how to learn, right? How to think but the experience that they get outside of campus, or excuse me, outside of the, the, that learning, when the students are, are learning to teach themselves and they're, they're teaching themselves new things that they don't um, know, they're, they're learning how to think critically, being able to apply those experiences to the things that they learn is what helps students uh, become very successful and why they are so sought after, uh, after graduation. So uh, again, the, the gap year kind of goes really well with that because we want students to have an experience that they can come and, and take to the classroom so that that enhances other people's experiences on campus as well. Uh, what resources are on campus to support students who may experience mental health challenges while on campus? That is an excellent question. Um, Olin has a, a very strong uh, support staff uh, within, uh, within student life. And, and mental health, certainly at an institution where students are highly motivated, there is a, a, a lot going on, especially in, in situations like this, mental health is a major thing and it, it is at the forefront, uh, I, would, I, I would say, of uh, Olin's, Olin's culture where there are, and certainly there, even when I visit campus, there are um, placards around campus about, uh, and, and posters on campus about how to, um, take care of yourself mentally and, and what resources are, are available. So certainly there, there's counseling that's available uh, for students. And, and again, the, <clears throat> in my experience, the overall culture of Olin is very um, mindful of mental health as well. They, they are, are very important from, from the president, which I should say that we have a new president coming in, uh, which is very exciting. And if you wanna check out the presidential search and who we've hired a, as president, uh, and that whole experience, I would encourage you to take a look at our website as well. So there's, um, uh, that's an exciting thing that, that's happening as well. Uh, but from the president down to, you know, me as a regional admission counselor who is, uh, you know, physically separated from campus, I think that that is kind of the, the message that mental health is a, is a major part of, of um, caring about mental health is a major part of, of who we are at Olin. Um, do you have additional educational support programs for students that may require additional support? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> if there are students that have, um, you know, whatever it may be, whether it's um, uh, a learning disability or a physical disability and you need longer time on, a, on a, an exam or special, you know, help with note taking. Yes, absolutely. Olin wants to be able to remove those barriers, as many barriers for students as possible to help them succeed. So yes, there, there are those opportunities. Uh, is the environment competitive academically among students? That, that's a great question. And I think, again, it, it would be a, a, a good question for, for one of our students. Uh, I think there is some sort of, of healthy, um, competitive uh, academic background, uh, but again, collaboration is a major part of who we are and it's a major part of the admission process. So like you, you heard me say, where we are observing students in uh, a group activity that we set up for them and we want the, the students really are there to support other students. And so we are very, very mindful and purposeful in our evaluation of students in identifying um, the students that really ha have a passion for helping others and tend to put others first over themselves. So I think that's something that is, um, and, and even putting first, uh, putting others over themselves is really just compassionate, that they care about others and they, they're not as concerned about being, you know, top dog, I guess I would say that's a, 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 in a way. So I think there, there is naturally on any college campus, you're going to have that kind of competitive, um, spirit, especially in, in with students that are highly motivated. But Olin is, since collaboration is kind of a, a, a major 
um, a major part of who we are. Not, not only do we take students or, or do we uh, have students that come in that way, but also, again, there's opportunity for students that, that if we see there's an opportunity for that student to grow as a person in this kind of, <coughs> excuse me, collaborative environment, we, we don't want to just take only students that kind of fit the Olin model. We want to take students that have the opportunity to grow. Um, so uh, again, that kind of competitive nature, I think, is um, on any college campus. But since the collaborative nature or collaboration is such a major key of who Olin is, it's, it's um, uh, I think it's l much less than it would be at a, at a larger institution. So um, yeah, I don't see any more questions coming in. I guess is that's it. You're muted, Dwayne, if you're... I'm sorry. So I, I, that's all the questions for today, Daniel. Um, if you have any final words um, you want to share, and then that will be um, it for sure. us. Um, well, definitely thank you for tuning in, and uh, I appreciate you chatting with me. Again, uh, my name is Dan Johnston, and I am uh, Olin's Regional Admission Counselor. If you have questions about you know, what Olin is doing throughout this um, pandemic, uh, and what uh, virtual resources are available, check out the website because there's a kind of a full page dedicated to what you can do to do a virtual visit and, and chat with an admission counselor. And I'm always available to chat. Um, my email address uh, is, I, I can share that with everyone. It's daniel.johnston at olin.edu. And if you go to the website, you'll be able to see my picture and get my email address. And uh, so I'm available to chat, but definitely check out the website if you are, are looking to uh, find out a little bit more about Olin and, um, you know, what virtual opportunities are available for students through the pandemic and, you know, when we might start opening campus back up for in-person visits. So, again, thank you for the opportunity. And, Daniel, we would love to continue to keep in touch with you um, as we continue to support students' post-secondary um, options. We want students to know about Olin and we hope that you'll be open to us referring students to you as well. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's what I'm here for. Great. And so we thank you for your time today, Daniel, and you do take care of yourself. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you.